been lost. It's been lost. What have we lost? Uh, well, we can't say that we haven't lost something because you can look at our crowd tonight and see that we've lost some people that used to be regular, at least on Wednesday nights. Our, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not bashing. I'll take tonight that I'm not bashing because it's not just tonight. Over, over the last period of last maybe a month, if you've really paid attention, you see that the crowds are starting to fall back. This is not in just Christian Fellowship Church. This is throughout church, wherever it's at, because a change of the season has come. And it's that time of the year where the summertime comes and we got ball games, we got and we have to keep our kids involved. We got all kinds of stuff. We got summer vacations, we got staying home and working in the yards, and we got all this other stuff that gets our activity, gets our minds and our attentions. But you know, we do lose something along that way. And then when we go to losing that is what I don't want us to lose. I don't want us to lose our connection with God. I don't I don't want us to lose that our fire from God because you know what regardless of all of that other if we don't have God and have our our life just overflowing then we lose something has anybody ever lost anything there's some things you wish you would have lost me and I ain't talking about your wife now that's not where I'm going <laughs> you've lost something when you lose something and it's very dear to you then you want it back. You want it, you, I mean, you really seek, you, you hunt it, you hunt it bad, and you have a desire to really and truly find it, and you go to into panic mode when it's something so dear. If you got a $10,000 diamond ring, ladies, and you lose it, it's going to be some sleepless nights, right? If you lose something that's so dear and precious, precious to you, you're going to hunt it, and you're going to do everything that you can. I'll use Pam as my guinea pig and my mother-in-law as an example. When Eli was little bitty, he was probably that tall, Pam. <laughs> what, one-year-old, two-year-old, maybe, two-year-old? Anybody ever lost your child? <laughs> Panic! <laughs> Woo! Man. Ma'am? No, Pam's not. Oh, you're talking about the child. You didn't even know what it was. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh huh. Pam uh, we got one day, and all of a sudden, I had just happened to be coming in, and here it was that couldn't find Eli. Couldn't find him nowhere. Really didn't like it. Didn't even know did it until you went to hunt him and knew that he was lost, but I mean, looked everywhere. And then I come in, and of course, the pond's right out in the back of the house. And first thing runs through your mind, they done drowned it in the pond. Drowned it in the pond. So I, being the policeman, Justin, you know how it is. You, everybody's, somebody's got to be calm in the crowd, right? Somebody's got to keep their senses and not let their mind run off. And I said, all right, let's backtrack. Let's go everywhere. Have you searched everywhere in the house? Yes, searched everywhere in the house. None, did this, all that. You look under the beds. Yeah, done looked all under the beds. Everybody looked. I said, well, let's go back, backtrack. And go back and search and start from the very beginning and work your way through. Come to find out, yeah, there he was, had crawled right up under the middle of the bed. Now, we're talking blood pressures now is 10,000 over 10,000. Uh, it's bad. But to have that feeling to lose something, there he was laying in the center of the bed, under the bed. You know, he couldn't get on the edge. He got to go all the way under the center. So when you just glance under the bed, no, he's not here, but there he is. But giving that example of really and truly losing something, then you just go into panic mode. You really and truly go into panic mode. You done locked your child in the car and you've lost your keys. Or the keys is locked in ignition and you don't have another way of getting in and the child is there and the, uh, laying in the th car seat and strapped in or whatever. Just call after call like that. You really go into panic mode. What I'm getting at is I really wish that we could... When we, when, we, when we feel like that we've lost God or that God's not there with us or when we find ourselves in this situation to where, you know, we don't have that connection with God like we once have, I wish we could go into panic mode like this and really reach out and seek Him to find Him just like we did if it was that precious child or that diamond ring or that souvenir daddy's 
uh, your, your daddy's, 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 daddy's bow and arrow or shotgun or it's just been in the generation for 200 years, whatever, something really Cape Seek. Well, our salvation and our relationship, not just saying our salvation, but our relationship with God needs and has to be just that way. A Cape, a, a, a something that, that we just got to, we got to keep it with us all the time. It's been lost. As we look in the book of Psalms tonight in chapter 85, book of Psalms chapter 85, verses 1 through 7 tonight. This is looking as David is writing, and he shows this, and he says, For the director of music, uh, you showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgot the iniquity of your people. And covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior. And put away your uh, displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show your unfailing, unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Tonight, God, as we look at some things that's been lost in our life, Father, I just, I, I just beg you, I, God, I just ask you, Father, to, 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 to put that fire back. Dear Father, restore us. Restore us. Dear Father, to that point, to where we once were, dear Father God. You said that you would restore us, Father, but also just revive. Revive us tonight, God. Revive our spirit. Revive us 100%, dear Father God. Revive us, revive us like we've never had before, Father. Put a fire in us that, God, it'll just, it, nobody can't help but get, but get burnt when they're around us, God. They can't help but feel the Holy Spirit whenever they're in our presence, God. Revive us and put us back to that spot, to the day that we accepted your Lord Jesus as Savior, your Son, Father. God, put us to that spot again in life. In the name of Jesus, it's been lost. It's been lost. I want to ask you, ask, answer yourself some of these things tonight as I ask you. Does God get all of your love all the time? Does God get all of your love all the time? Is your love for Him constant? Do you still desire things that God dislikes or disapproves of? Do you serve less today than you have served in the past before? Do you still desire to tell others about Jesus? Is your spiritual tank empty? Is your spiritual tank have a leak in it? Is your spiritual tank less than what it was in the past? Is your light, is it bright, is it dim, or is it just flickering? Is your light bright, is it dim, or is it flickering? Can anybody say yes to one of these seven tonight? If you would, raise your hand. If you can answer yes to one of these tonight, raise your hand. You know what that tells me? We need reviving. We need reviving. We need to be restored. We need reviving. We need to be revived in our life. We say, God, can you put it back? And reviving means to re, uh, means to put back. And, and vive comes from the word of live. So we need to, God to put back life. We need God to put back the life into us that, that we once used to have when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We need to be revived. We need to live again in our life. We need to have the life today, as he says, revive us again. And that, whenever David was speaking this and pouring this out, you know, he says, us again. And that again means that he already had it one time before. And we've all, we've all been there. This is not the first time in our life that, that, we, that, that we've got to this point. You know, we have those ups and we have the downs. We have the where we on fire, and then we have that where we, we just kind of smolder down. And then all of a sudden, 
something to come back along in our life and, it, and, and throw an extra log on the fire or stir up the coals that's already there and, and the, the fire revives back and, and we go through these stages but, but church, but this is where I'm going. You know, most of the time whenever a church starts to get this revival, you know, revival should be constant. We should have a, a life in us all the time. We should have a kickstart and it stays there all the time but but we're human and we fall but most churches and and I was where I come up with this I was just reading an article about churches and the way churches fall into the stages of of where churches come up to where they start to have a, a revival in their church and you see where the majority of churches today where the majority of churches and say, God, we need a reviving is after it's done completely demolished and completely used up and spider webs has taken over the church. Spider webs has done come in and the pews is empty, the chairs is empty and life has totally gone. In other words, they have lost what they once had. We don't need to get to that point. We don't need to get to that point. We need to get the fire before it gets to that stage in life. So we, need to, we need to continue. We should have revival services, I, I suppose, from out every service that we have. We need, to, we need to let this be a fresh fire in our life. And, and he says, restore us again, God. Restore us, oh God, oh Savior. And put away your displeasure towards us. See, God, when God sees that 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 that, that churches and their structures and there's buildings that's been built for people to come and hear the word of God and, and they're not coming and they're not, and they're not there and, and they're saying I'm begging you to come I'm begging you you see God 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 wants to he, he has displeasure with us he has displeasure with the people when say hey I, I've baked the cake I, I've sliced it I've laid it on the plate in front of you and you still won't eat it I, I've made the way, I've cleared the paths, I did everything that, that I could do, I, I've made the way, but you still won't eat it. And, and God said, I, here it is, I, I've made the way, I've put the word out there, I, I, I've built the fire back, but you still won't get up very close to the fire and get warm. We don't need our churches, I'm not just talking about CFI, I'm talking about church in general. I'm talking about gatherings of people. You know, if, if we continue to wait until the crowds dwindle down more and more and more and more, then you only got one or two, and we're still looking around. Well, what happened? What? I mean, what happened? We show up, we turn on the lights, we open the doors, we turn on the air condition, we invite people to come in. But what happened? What happened? We're only going, you know, we're going to go where there's excitement. We're going to go where there's excitement. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to tend to, to, to be where there's excitement. And that's whenever we come and we had our closest relationships with God. And let's go back through these. Number one, it says, do you, uh, do you get, uh, do, does God get all the love that you have all the time? And, and when we are in our closest relationship with God, when we are our closest with God, you know what? God's got our love 100%, 100% of the time. Well, that's all we think about. That's all that's on our mind. When we lay down into bed at night, we're thinking about, we're thinking about God Almighty. When we wake up in the morning, God, I just thank you for letting the birds sing today. God, I thank you for letting the sun shine today. God, I thank you for letting me have pain in my body today, God, because there's a lot of people that, that just wish that they was alive to still have pain in their life. They still there. You know, there's a lot of people burning in hell that would say, I, I wish I was back up there to do this all over again. There's a lot of people that wish they could go back and start their life over. But you see, it's been lost. It's been lost. It's been lost. So if you don't have, if you don't give God 100% of the love to date as what you did one time in your life, you've lost it. And we need, to re, we need to restore that. It's like working on a computer and, you know, you get a computer problem and, and a glitch gets in it and you go back and you restore it back to a date when there was no problem with it. 
That's where we need, to, we need to restore our lives back to when we was the closest with God, when God got all of our love. Is your love for him constant? Is it 100% constant? Is it, is, is, it, is it the same in the daytime? Is it is at nighttime? Is it same on Mondays? Is it is on Friday? Is it same on Sundays that it is on Mondays? Is it same on Monday? I mean, on Sundays, is it is on Wednesdays? Or is Wednesdays more or less or whatever? If it's not, it's been lost. The third one, do you still desire things that God disproves of? Do we still have in our minds, you know, oh man, I, I want to go back to be an alcoholic again. Oh, I want to go back to, I want to go back to be a thief again. Oh, I, I want to go back to where I don't have to go to church on Sundays and just sit in my recliner and go fishing, go do whatever I want to do. Do we still have those desires of the world? Is the, is the world desire still empowering us? Is the world's desire still overtaking us? If, if it is, then we've lost our relationship that we once had with God. Number four, do you, do you serve less today than before? Do you serve less today than before? Where you used to be so active and you used to volunteer so much to do God's work. You used to volunteer to be on a, a door-to-door uh, witness program. Or you used to volunteer to do this in the church or do that or whatever it may. Do you, where you, well, I, I done got up too old now. Go ask Moses. He didn't have some of his hardest tasks until he was 80 years old. I'm too old. I can't get around. God helped us out. We can't walk good. I mean, we got telephones. We got stamps and pen and paper. Man, do I still serve today? Do I still serve God as much today as what I used to? Do I still serve? You know, church, I'm preaching this to me. Because this was hitting me in the head like a ton of bricks when I was studying up on this. Rex, what have you lost? What have you lost, Rex? I know I've lost some of this stuff. I know if I've lost it, being a pastor in the pulpit, I know that the congregation's lost some of this stuff. But that's why I start with the head. That's why God starts with the head. And that's why David said, I know you can restore us again, O God, our Savior. And he says in verse uh, 6, will you not revive us again? God, I ask you tonight, will you not revive us again? Will you not revive us, God? Will you not put the fire back in our life, the passion back in our life? God, won't you put this back, bring us back to where the whole in church, the entire church would, would just cry and squall on the altar? God, won't you put this back? Won't you put life back in us again, God? And he's saying, yeah, I'll put it back in there, but I got to have you to stand up first. I gotta have you first. I gotta have you. I gotta have somebody that's willing to be revived. So most churches start after the church is done deplenished and gone. But I beg we need to start before it gets to that point. And I reckon I'm bringing all this because it's that time of the year when church attendance drops off. Church attendance always drops off in the summertime. You know, the, the, the biggest crowds that you have in churches is spring and fall. Spring and fall. You see, I, I don't want people to lose anything. I, I don't want people to have to say it's been lost. I don't want people to have to say, I've lost the fire that I used to have. For... <coughs> I, I, I don't want people to say it's been lost. I've lost this. Do you still desire to tell others about Jesus? Do you really and truly desire? Do you find yourself witnessing more or less today? If we say we find ourselves witnessing less today, then our desire to witness to people has been lost. Revive us again, God. 
Revive us again, God. We don't, we, we, we don't give you all of our love 100% of the time. We're, we're not constant with you, God. Revive us again, God. We, we, don't, we don't have the, the desire of, of you. But, God, we got the desires of the world. Revive us again, God. God, we serve you less today. God, revive us again, God. Revive us. Is your spiritual tank empty? You see, right here is the key. Right here is the key. If you want to do all these other things, if you want, if, if you want to have 100% love for God and you want to constantly serve Him and you want to constantly have your mind on God all the time and you want to serve Him more and, and you, want to, you want to have the desire to tell more people, then this one right here is your spiritual tank empty. You know how to get fire and to get everything else? Fill up our spiritual tank. In the book of Luke, in chapter 19 and verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ Himself, came to seek and to save what was lost. You know what? If you can raise your hand tonight at any of these, any of these seven, and the last one, is your light bright? Is it dim or is it flickering? If you can answer to either one of these seven tonight, yes, and everybody in here raise your hand and say, yes, I can. You know what? Jesus Christ is seeking me and you to die. He's seeking us. He's seeking us. And to save, what is he coming to save? He's coming to save in me and you what has been lost in our life. He's coming to find us. He's coming to revive us. He's coming to, to save us. He's coming to give us that life that was already, you know what? It was already implanted in us. We was born with Jesus Christ in our life because his blood pumps through our veins. We come from God Almighty. We was only formed by God. Yes, we were born in sin when we was born, but you know what? God was in us in the beginning, church. We just need to be revived and to put life into what God has already put in us. He said, I come to seek and I come to save. And whatever the fire that you've lost tonight, whatever fire, whatever desire, whatever it is that we have lost, God is coming to restore that. He says, I'm coming to seek and to save what is lost. So whatever it is that we've lost tonight, any of these seven tonight, God is ready to restore it. He's ready to put it back. He is ready to put it back. He wants to put it back. He wants to put it back. Does anybody in here tonight want it put back? Do you really and truly have a hundred percent love for God? Do you get, does God get all of your love all the time? Is your love for Him constant all the time? Do you still desire things that God disproves of or God doesn't like? Do you serve less today than you did before? Do you still desire to tell others about Him? Is your spiritual tank empty? Is your light bright, dim, or flickering? Churches that is lost, let me don't by no means nobody say, nobody say, call out a church name. But do you know a church that used to be packed out? And now they might be four or five or ten people there. Raise your hand if you know some if you know a church that way. You know what? If we don't keep the fire in CFI, somebody be raising their same hand about CFI. They'll be raising their hand about this church. See, I don't want it to get to that point. I want us to correct it. Way, way, way before it gets to that point. It's been lost. Tonight, 
If you answered yes, is they find something to play.